opening statement, and then we'll uh, go to questions shortly thereafter. Uh, Coach, whenever you're ready. Uh, I mean, huge road win, ton of credit for our guys for upper and second half. I thought, you know, we had to win the turnover battle. We turned them over 20 times, and we turned them all over 12 times or so. I thought that was key in the game. You know, our rebounding, we ended up even, but getting 20 awards, I thought our effort was great. Charles ended up with six awards, and each one had seven total rebounds in the second half. We really needed our guys to come alive, but I, it's as good a half defensively as we played maybe all year against a quality team. I mean, they're, it's a good team that's going to win a lot of games. You know, they're well coached. They play really hard, you know, and I thought they played harder than us in the first half. You know, we charged the college points. They were well ahead of us at the half. I think they're 13. Who called points at us at the half? We ended up charting it. We, we you know, won it by seven. So, start our effort picked up in the second half. When our defensive effort picks up, offense usually comes around. That's what happened uh, tonight. We didn't. We haven't shot it particularly great, really, for a while. Maybe since the Gonzaga game, but we've played hard enough to win two big SEC games here to start the year. Thanks, coach. Go ahead and take questions. Uh, Mike Rodak, go ahead and get started. There was a span of 11 minutes there um, from late in the first half through the second half where Florida didn't have a field goal first eight minutes of the second half concluded. Just what was said at halftime that you think kind of got that effort ratcheted up to where, you know, the defense really clamped down there? You know what? I mean, we just challenged them with the blue collar stuff. Like we, we came into the game saying we had to win that war and we were losing it by a large margin at the half. We weren't playing hard enough. So, you know, if we're going to win tough road games, we got to play harder. So, Thought, you know, we didn't make any huge adjustments on defense. We went over some stuff that we just had to play harder, be tougher, get some rebounds. You know, they thought they had too many uh, second chance points there. And we thought we picked it up quite a bit in the uh, second half, just that the whole energy level changed. And, you know, what I think we're down three at the half and ended up taking a 15 point lead there at eight minutes in. So made a was that an 18-point run on them there kind of at the first eight minutes of the second half. So I think somebody told me it was a 22-4 to four run. So it, you can't do that without getting stops. And then, I, you know, with how fast we want to play, they, they really slowed us down. They did a good job with the press of slowing us down. And, you know, when we got stops, they couldn't get into their press. They couldn't slow us down as much. You know, we got out. thought JQ and JD did a good, really good job finding guys. And the ball moved a lot better in the second half when we were playing off our stops. Katie Wyndham, go ahead. Coach, yesterday you talked about the last trip down to Gainesville where you blew the double-digit lead. Um, and then tonight in the second half, Florida kind of cut it down to five after you were up 15. Just how proud of you or your team for um, not letting up and kind of what was the key to that tonight? I mean, yeah, it started to go through my head when they when they cut it to four or five there. Uh, five, I think, is as low as they got it. So, and we needed to get some stops. Hey, we made some timely baskets there when they cut it to and we got some stops. But just keep coaching each possession, one possession at a time. You know, you don't want to talk about the whole game as a whole in the middle of the game. You're trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out possession by possession what you have to do to win the game. And I thought, you know, both sides of the ball when they cut it to five, we got some stops, some big rebounds, some offensive rebounds, and but Quinterly really Quinterly made some plays on both ends. You know, we got that steal. They're uh, late uh, on the backside. He made some good reads on defense. You know, offensively, he played with uh, really good pace in the second half, got downhill, find Juwan for those back-to-back, -back, you know, buckets for Juwan was cutting on the baseline that were big. So, uh, you know, Cornelly did a good job. I, all of the guys really did. You know, that check was – check won the plus-minus at plus-22 when he's in. That doesn't happen. You know, without his defense being where it's at, you know, he played 36 minutes. You know, we went by 13. He's plus 22. That means four minutes he was out. We were minus nine, which probably shows you his value of being in the game tonight. So, Keon Ellis played great coming back home out of Florida. He's tended to play well against Florida uh, his two years with us. So, it's happy for him uh, playing back in his home state too. Drew D. Arman. Uh, yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you about both uh, Charles Bediaco. He, he overcame the two early fouls to have 11 and 7, and I thought he did a great job on Castleton in the second half. And then Juwan Gary, I thought he showed a lot of toughness closing out the game offensively and finishing at the rim. Juwan was huge for us. 
I mean, he, you know, we challenged him. He only had one rebound at the half. He came up with seven in the second half, big defensive rebounds. You know, he had big offensive rebounds, too, to keep possessions alive. Did some great slashes, cuts. We finished hard at the rim. He had a big-time left-hand finish and transition. So I think, you know, and then Charles, you know, Charles has been struggling a little bit, uh, guarding some really good post players. He's been great on his help defense. Just, you know, and I thought he was a lot better tonight, guarding uh, – Garden Post guy. So, you know, I happy for Charles. I thought, you know, he, he's a great kid that wants to do better. You know, he came up with six offensive rebounds. If he doesn't get those offensive rebounds, we don't win this game. So he's uh he was he was big for us tonight. All right, we got three more questions in queue. We're we're trying to get out of here, so we're gonna finish with these three. Uh go ahead, Maxwell. You can start us off. Yeah, coach. Um, you kind of limited them in their transition offense. You know, yeah, I think you made that a point of emphasis. We're going into the game, can you just talk more about kind of your, what was the game plan with that? With limiting their transition opportunities? Yeah, so the last game against Tennessee, we had, you know, we show all of our transition defense screw-ups, if you will, every game. We had 15 clips against Tennessee. thought our half-court defense was pretty good. Our transition was awful against Tennessee. We, this will be the last time we have a week break between games you know, barring some type of COVID pause or whatever. So we really locked into our transition D and made a huge point of emphasis. So, you know, I thought some guys made some tough plays. I mean, Quinterly made a really tough play off a turnover to stop a transition bucket. You know, we just guys sprinted back, made tough plays. And we, you know, it was, it's been a huge point of emphasis. You know, and I'm looking right now, like we get the defensive player analysis. Quinterly was a 0.84 when he was in the game. Like that's, it was the third best on the team, you know, uh, and really the other two didn't play that many minutes. Noah and Keon Ambrose were a point eight two. So for all the guys that played significant minutes, he was our best best guy on the floor defensively, which is a huge step for Javon. You know, we really needed him to take that step, and I, I was really happy for him on both sides of the ball. When his defense was – when he's as locked in as he was on defense, the offense came pretty easy there in the second half. So uh, we'll go with Joey Blackwell and finish with Austin. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Coach, you guys have a lot of, of course, uh, road games in the SEC coming up. I'm just curious, with the first true road game you had against Memphis not going so well, what does a win like tonight on the road do for you guys and your team's confidence on the road for the rest of this season? Yeah, I mean, it's big. I mean, it's, you know, a true road game. I don't think anybody would call our Gonzaga game in Seattle a uh, neutral game, though. That was – it felt like we played pretty well on a road game in Seattle against Gonzaga. So, you know, I, I – but – the, the first true road game at Memphis, we were awful. I didn't think our guys came ready to play. Our energy stunk. Ball didn't move. This was much better. So I think our guys are showing some leadership, showing some maturity. Like, you got to play well. Whether it's home or on the road, I mean, these are SEC games. They're tough to win, and there comes a level of intensity and sense of urgency on the defensive end that, that we had tonight. All right, let's finish up with Austin. Go ahead. Coach, you mentioned kind of struggling on offense again. Florida outshot you by percentage on field goals and three-pointers, but you were able to make 16 of 19 free throws on the road, which is kind of a big deal. How important is it to knock down the free throws on the road especially? That's big, and we've made a huge point of emphasis on it. Sometimes free throws are one of those deals that are a mental deal. You know, if you really harp on the guys and they overthink it, it's going to backfire. So we've just made a point of emphasis. The guys getting in the gym, we do a little team free throw game at the end of some shoot rounds and try to make them shoot some pressure ones, but I'm not over talking about it. I, we tell the guys like you lose yourself in the game, playing hard, making the right defensive plays, just playing the game the right way. If you're a good player and you're, you're at free throw, sure you step to the free throw line, you make the free throws because it's part of the game and you're just trying to win the game. I think that happened. I mean, you go through the, and, and, and you're, you're right. I mean, I'm looking at it now. We shot 40%. They shot 42%. We shot 28. They shot 35 from three. Like they shot the ball better than we did from the field. And I thought we'd get ourselves a lot of second chance points and we turned them over 20 times. We've been making a big point of emphasis on our defensive turnover rates. It's been so low. I thought our guys played harder there, but you go down the list. I mean, Jawan's four for four, you know, he, he struggled at the line, but he goes three or four. I mean, keep going. JD, hundred percent, Keon Ellis, hundred percent. You know, we, we had some guys step up and make some free throws. So that was big. That's, you know, it's nice to win a game at the free throw line. Opposed to losing one because we've been in that uh, position before too. All right. Thank you, coach.